in Acts chapter 20 verse 7 to 8 and 11 on the first day of the week we came together to break bread Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day kept on talking until midnight there were many laughs in the upstairs room where we were meeting on verse 11 then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate after talking until daylight he left no doubt this happened on Sunday but it's not the day of weekly preaching or worship day. It is a despedida party. Paul's farewell party in Troas. Did the weekly Sabbath rest worship, worship day done all night until sunrise? Of course not. It did not even mention that they give thanks when they break the bread. It is not customary communion bread. It is our Lord Jesus teaching also that every time we were together, we shall talk about the word of God. And that is what Apostle Paul had done all night. But it doesn't mean that it was a Sunday weekly worship day. I have had experienced it many times. We will never get tired of talking or falling to sleep, talking about the Word of God all night. In First Timothy 6, 20-21, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge which some have professed and in so doing have wandered from the faith. 2 Timothy 2.16 Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Compare Acts 20 verse 7 to 27 verse 35. Now, verse 34. Now I ask you to take some food. You need to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he had said this, verse 35, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them. All Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. And in verse 27 35, Paul took bread and gave thanks to God. And then he broke it and began to eat. This is not a communion time also, even though he took bread and gave thanks to God. It is just a normal meal time, the same with Acts 20 verse 7, that Paul broke bread and ate without even thanking God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. Now about the collection of God's people. Do what I told the Galatians churches do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I'll give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. No doubt about it. Apostle Paul had told them that collection for God's people should be done on the first day of the week or Sunday, saving it up as a gift for the poor, the righteous members in Jerusalem. It does not mean that Sunday is the weekly day of worship. In fact, Paul was not there yet. He even gave the instruction that when he come, no collections will have to be made so that they can spend their precious time hearing the word of God without interruption. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Nothing in this verse that said it was Sunday or the first day of the week, as they had claimed. But in Mark chapter 2, verse 28, So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. In Matthew 12, verse 8, For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And in Luke 6, verse 5, Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Here, our Lord Jesus Christ is talking about what was written in the Ten Commandments, the weekly Sabbath rest Saturday worship, and the seven special Sabbaths that He followed, and have something to do with God's plan for our salvation. If God is willing, we shall uncover and study the truth concerning this Sabbath. We have had proven that the Sunday worship day belief and arguments are all wrong. People were misled. Now let us look at the clear facts and undeniable truth concerning weekly Saturday Sabbath preaching and worship day. Let us see what our Lord Jesus Christ did, the Lord of Sabbath. In Luke chapter 4, verse 10, 14 through 21 and 31 through 32. Verse 14, Jesus said unto Galilee in the fire of the Spirit. In news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, Saturday, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. 
And he stood up to read. It was his custom that every Sabbath day he preached. Verse 17. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone is in the synagogue were passing on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to reach the people, to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. It was our Lord Jesus' custom and tradition to preach and heal on Saturday, weekly Sabbaths, and during the special Sabbath days that can fall in any given days of the week. In Luke 13, verse 10 to 17. On the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching one of the, in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for walk, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey? from the stall and lead it out to give it water. Then shall not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was done, he was doing. Mark 6, 1-4 Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him that he even does miracles? Is that this the carpenter? Is that this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? A lot of sisters were here with us and they took offense at him. Here's a proof also that Mary did not remain virgin as the Roman Catholic had teaches and claim. Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown among his relatives and his own house is a prophet without honor. We have seen the undeniable truth that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Sabbath, preached, teaches, and healed on Sabbath, Saturday, and not on Sunday. The post-Christian and others claim that Saturday Sabbath was moved on Sunday because it was the day of the Lord Jesus' resurrection. First, Sunday is not the day of resurrection. It is Saturday. Because Jesus is the Lord of Saturday Sabbath. We will study it deeply if God is willing.